So, Ben Shapiro recently went kind of viral, but in a negative way, because this very big movie that everybody's been talking about lately that I still haven't seen, Barbie, has hit the box office, and it's been one of those unfortunate scenarios where the right hitched themselves too strongly on on a product that was inevitably going to be a success and making the go woke go broke claim about it but not giving themselves enough room to flip on it upon realizing it was actually a big success and they can't win that battle they did this with um game of thrones house of the dragon for example if you guys look back um a lot of right-wing pundits and grifters such as um uh the the critical drinker guy basically went after shows like house of the dragon for having black people and stuff in it because that's woke and all that before it came out the coverage of it was interesting you see before it came out there was no saying how successful it was actually going to be so it was more profitable to on it but then well look at things like this you've got uh critical drinker Critic, uh, drinkers chasers why nobody cares about house of the dragon from two months before it dropped uh and then it comes out, it ends up being HBO's biggest premiere ever. He tweeted, genuinely had no idea House of the Dragon had even started. There seems to be no buzz around that at all. Pretending like it wasn't big on the night of release, but then it ends up being too big to ignore. So he even goes back and changes the title of his old review uh, of the trailer to just House of the Dragon trailer breakdown. Because they're all grifting cucks, okay? They're all grifting cucks. They don't actually care about any of the- they don't believe any of this sh all the thumbnails and whatnot before the show dropped and was a massive success were things like this from Nerdrotic, another friend of that uh, uh, crew of people. And so before the show dropped, before it was bad for them to go against it culturally, they shit on it mercilessly. But then it dropped, they realized they couldn't win a culture war against this massive success of a show, and so then they started attacking Rings of Power instead, and claimed House of the Dragon as a non-woke show that's actually good out of nowhere and just totally flipped on it. They couldn't pull that with Barbie. Now they have to take the full-on anti-Barbie direction despite its overwhelming success, and it's just made them look like fools. Notably, Ben Shapiro, who did a takedown review of Barbie that has gone viral for how bad it is. Everyone's been dunking on it. And because of that, Ben Shapiro has been compelled to make a video responding to people who've dunked on him on TikTok. So he's made this video, Ben Reacts to TikTok Haters. This came out just today. Let's see what's going on. Alrighty, folks, today I'm going to be tortured by my producers with a bunch of haters on TikTok. And I'm very curious to see how much they hate me and why. First clip. Girl. I like the Zoomer editing because, you know, we're, we're trying to appeal to younger people now that the right is essentially going to be made entirely uh, in like in what's the term for it? Uh, inviable as a political group in America as Gen Z gets to voting age and gets to the age of actually gaining power um, over like our government. So they're trying to do the whole like, uh, how do you do fellow kids thing? Um, oh, Caveman Real H, thank you for the $5 super chat. You actually made a good point to add on to this. Shoe on Head, who as dumb as she is politically, is actually a very good businesswoman and knows how to do culture war shit. That's the one thing she's good at. Um, knew how to handle the Barbie thing. She made a video where instead of joining the rest of the right-wing fervor on attacking the Barbie movie for being woke or um, playing as a lefty and defending the Barbie movie and saying it's not woke or it's woke and it's good, she instead did the actually Barbie is anti-woke move. She tried to basically have her cake and eat it too and succeeded. She gets to have the uh, benefit of not being anti-Barbie and being on the Barbie love train, right, for this movie that's extremely successful, while also pleasing people who are anti-woke and don't like woke shit in movies. It's a very good way of handling it, but Ben Shapiro did not handle it as smartly as Shoe on Head did. Are you okay? You feel like it's a red flag? Please, God, take me now. Oh, babe. If you need help, let us know, because that's not it. Okay, four red flags on this one. One, nose piercing. Two, pink hair. Three, crazy eyelashes. And four, sleeve. And her nails go back. Oh, that's like five. Yeah, no, that's right. Uh, okay, so we're not... 
We're, we're not actually going to have any arguments in this video. It's just going to be blue hair pronouns comments. You, do you guys remember when Ben Shapiro would do, like, uh, debates? There was a time when Ben Shapiro was known as, like, the debate lord guy. Because he would go to college campuses and debate clueless college kids who just knew there was some conservative pundit guy, like, saying trans people were bad on campus, and so they'd go there to try to, like, see what that's about, and maybe they'd grab the mic to argue against him. They didn't know who Ben Shapiro was. Um, and so Ben Shapiro built a massive uh, following off of being this debate lord with 18-year-old college students who were, like, nervously standing in a crowd of people jeering at them while Ben Shapiro makes the DreamWorks smile at them. But then, a couple years ago, things started to change. Ben Shapiro reached a level of success where people that I know started to ambush him at events. He did these public event events at colleges so people who knew who, who he is know his game and actually know, like, researched prior to the event, the topics that he'd be debating, ambushed him in public and confronted him on his shit takes. It happened a couple times that went viral on Twitter. And after that, Ben Shapiro stopped even doing the college debate events. He He's literally gone from only debating college students to stopping that because he got ambushed by people who knew what they were talking about, to doing videos where he would debunk arguments made by people who don't like him online, though very cherry-picked and, you know, selecting for, like, the weakest of the arguments, to now it's just, ah, oh, look, pink hair pronouns. Zoomy edits. I guess that's all you need to get Zoomers on board with conservatism, he thinks. Like, the reason why people like Andrew Tate are so successful with Zoomers is because they're successfully convincing these Zoomer young men that there is a real problem that he is offering a solution to. Ben Shapiro's content here is just like, maybe it'll get a fair amount of positivity from the Zoomer crowd because of the editing and the fact that it's shitting on pink-haired TikTokers, but outside of that, I don't think it's going to have much, like, convincing power compared to someone like, uh... Uh, uh, what you call it, uh, Andrew Tate. Right, nails was another one. I'm never gonna understand the mystery of life where, where women are capable of typing with those nails. Or wiping. So, well, I wasn't even gonna go to wiping, but... <laughs> so, so is it just, like, super hardcore edits and no... <laughs> <laughs> it rhymes! <laughs> yeah, there, there's a lot okay. going on in this video. Okay. Next one. What is make fun Just of a the reminder that Ben Shapiro is a guy who claims that he cares about facts and logic and yet ignores every time a expert tells him that he's wrong and claims that uh, homosexuality is bad, not based on any facts or evidence, but based on a piece of paper that somebody wrote on in a time when people thought the earth was flat. Real logic. That's actually not true. They didn't think the Earth was flat back then. We've known the Earth was round for a very long time. We used a method involving shadows and wells to pull that off, and we also did it with sticks. But uh, yeah, we 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 knew the the Earth was round back then. But also, good point overall. But not the Earth fl flat thing. Logical guy. Devastating rebuttal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So basically, the argument that person made there was completely accurate. We've literally seen Ben Shapiro in, like, that big debate audience at a college get confronted about him saying that, uh... So Ben Shapiro has always claimed that facts don't care about your feelings, right? Um, that he doesn't believe that trans women are women because science says that they are men. That is his, like, slogan, practically. So he got confronted with the fact that every major scientific institution, medical institution, psycho psychology institution, etc., backs up and affirms the idea that A, gender and sex aren't the same thing, something Ben Shapiro disagrees with, B, that trans people's identities, as they identify, are valid insofar as gender is concerned, C, that gender transition is the best, best treatment there is, the best and only treatment there is for gender dysphoria, um, all of those things are backed up and solidified as basically law at this point um, by all of the consensus of scientific and medical institutions. He gets confronted by that fact, and his response is to say that woke propagandists and activists have pressured scientists and doctors into believing this. 
and into saying this, and you can't trust them. That is his claim when you confront him on that fact. But when he's not confronted on this fact, he will go back to pretending as though there is this massive body of scientific and medical and psychological data that backs up his view that there is no distinction between sex and gender, that trans people are actually just mentally ill and their identities aren't valid. This does not exist. He's just pulling from an imaginary non-tangible thing he's referring to and pretending exists but when you confront him he will literally go full conspiracy theory mode you were murdered ben shapiro does not listen to all the experts i like he listens to other experts sometimes other experts what he means by that are like doctors who have literally been disbarred or what's the term for disbarred like they've had their medical license taken away and have been are literally like unanimously viewed as crackpots because they believe in like crystals and demons and shit who who remembers when the right was getting behind this doctor the woman i'm about to show you is an actual doctor and the right loved this lady the president of the United States is promoting disproven and potentially harmful medical treatments for COVID-19. And I know, look, it's not new, uh, but in recent days, there's been talk amongst Houston, who also believes that women... So this is the dreams. Trump, uh, the Trump endorsed doctor. What we call astra sex. That means this person is not really a demon or Nephilim. It's just a human being that's a witch. And they astra project and sleep with people. That's doctor. That is not even close to the craziest thing that that lady has said. Can we get, can we get some, oh yeah, here it is. Here's the PragerU bit. This was posted by PragerU as like a positive, like Ben Shapiro endorses PragerU, by the way. This was posted by PragerU as a positive endorsement of this woman. I came here to Washington DC to tell America, nobody needs to get sick. This virus has a cure. It is called hydroxychloroquine, zinc and zitromax. I know you people want to talk about mask. Hello? You don't need mask. There is a cure. I know they don't want to open schools. No, you don't need to, people to be locked down. There is prevention and there is a cure. I'm keeping them honest, just medically. That she goes on to talk about the demons. Wait, where, where is she talking about the cum demons? No, you got to, hold on. We need the full clip of the cum demons. These are the doctors that they like to bring in. Now to this story. Here we go. I think this is good. I'm Dr. Stella Emanuel. I'm a primary care physician in Houston, Texas. This Houston woman now in national news thanks to COVID-19 claims like this. There is a cure for COVID. It's called hydroxychloroquine. I know you people want to talk about masks. Hello? You don't need masks. Let's tackle the first claim. Our sources, infectious no, disease the cum expert, demons. Dr. Peter Hotez, the cum the demons. FDA. Now we have multiple studies. Hydroxychloroquine has uh, no proven benefit for either. Also home to Firepower Ministries. That's a Christian ministry run by Dr. Emmanuel. So yes, we can verify she's a real doctor. She does, however, yep. have a history of outrageous claims, including that doctors make medicine using DNA from aliens. Yeah, there it is. COVID-19 videos have been taken off social media. Demon aliens. Dr. Emanuel tweeted and demanding semen. Facebook repost them, threatening Jesus will take down Facebook if they don't. With your verify, I'm Marcelino Obed Anyway, these are the people that, like, Ben Shapiro and other conservatives will reference as, like, backing up their claims. These are the, the experts you don't like, as uh, Ben Shapiro likes to say. These people are widely, widely shunned by the broader medical community. For very good reason. Um, there is there is a good reason why people are upset with Ben Shapiro for picking and choosing um, very dishonestly what experts he'll listen to in regards to these topics when the overwhelming majority of them that are actually like verified, peer reviewed, respectable, etc. believe the opposite of what Ben Shapiro believes. Not to mention, the dude's now astro fun The dude astro-funded, or astro-funded, astro-turfed his own sister's YouTube career. Remember when he was paying, along with the Daily Wire's budget, in order to get his sister, Abby Shapiro, into, like, the big conservative YouTube circuit? You couldn't escape ads for her videos, but now that she's, I guess, stopped because she's got a baby now or whatever, now it's just Ben Shapiro ads with, like, the cringiest shit ever. Have you seen that one ad thumbnail? For Ben Shapiro's videos, Ben Shapiro. Who's seen this awful thumbnail? 
Oh, he changed it. Ben Shapiro changed the thumbnail because people made fun of it. No, it changes now. Guys. Guys, you're not going to believe this. Hold on. So when you see the video on Google Images, it hasn't updated initial, like the initial video hasn't updated the thumbnail that he changed. So this was the original thumbnail that people were making fun of, where it's the thumbnail for Mission Impo or the, the poster for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. And, he, and they like edited Ben Shapiro's face onto there and everybody was dunking on this video and this uh, thumbnail. And he changed it to this, but it hasn't updated over Google images yet so when you click this thumbnail in google images the image brought up becomes this because the update hasn't gone through because google f sucks why would he change it unless he was embarrassed about people dunking on the thumbnail but that video and that thumbnail were being heavily pushed as an ad on youtube because like most of the success of these people is just bought and paid for when i say homosexuality is sinful like the sinful because this concept of sin is in the Bible. So yeah, that's the context. When he says bad, I don't know what he means by bad. Is he trying to pretend like he doesn't think sin is bad? Is he going to try to pretend like he follows the hate the sin, not the sinner philosophy when most of his content and his reputation is around as be being as cruel as possible to those that he considers sinners, like trans people and gay people and stuff? Other than the context of sinful, because you know, again, there's like bad sushi, but that's not what we're talking about when we talk about particular human activity. If what we're talking about is societally useful, heterosexual relationships are more societally useful than homosexual relationships because they produce children. I don't even know what he means. And I'm not sure he knows what he. Well, that's not a case for why people should have a freedom to do a thing. The argument about why someone should have a freedom to do a thing and if they shouldn't have a freedom to do a thing is not if people have this freedom, then good things will happen. The it, the argument should be if people have this freedom, then not like there won't be bad things happening. Right. Right now, it is bad that LGBT people don't have this handful of freedoms that is growing by the day considering the policies conservative states are passing. Hell, they just banned the teaching of AP psychology in Florida schools because the consensus among psychologists is that sex and gender aren't the same thing, and that is what is taught in AP psychology, and so this state outright banned the teaching of the class, and the only way it can come back is by removing any teaching of that topic from the class, but then that makes it non-valid for the college AP point. So it, you no longer get credit for taking the class if they do adapt it to follow Florida's laws against teaching gender theory, quote unquote. So, uh, yeah, Th these people are actively waging a battle against education and science while pretending like they're the logic bros the whole way through. It is genuinely pure to the core evil, and they know it. He means. And I'm pretty sure you don't use the Bible as a source of like debating I, yes, I don't use the bible as a source of debating and, and thus if you're asking me what his world so there is a difference between using the bible as a source when debating as in saying the bible said this so it is true and your values and beliefs being taken from the bible and thus making you willing to lie and misrepresent anything to line up with what the Bible says is true, because no matter what the world tells you and what logic tells you, you have to have faith in the Bible and in your religion and in God, because anything that goes against that faith is just a test that God is giving you to test your faith. That's how they see it. Evidence that goes against their worldview is a test from God to test their faith. Whether homosexuality is sinful, I will always say yes, biblically it is sinful. Yeah, but he smirked at the end of that video, so clearly he's right. He did smirk. There was some smirking and bad grammar. Those really? Be ben Shapiro is is c making that criticism? That someone smirking at the end of their of their comment does, doesn't add to their... Ben is doing that? The, the DreamWorks smile guy? Two things I noticed. Ben Shapiro said the dumbest thing you'll ever hear about school shootings. Wham! We're telling these teachers that it's better for them to jump in front of doors and block bullets with their body than to arm these same teachers so that they can actually defend the students. It makes zero sense. There are more than just these two stupid options. Either you support teachers pathetically blocking doorways with their bullet-riddled corpses, or you support arming these teachers to defend against mass shootings. Which one is it gonna be? How about we instead make it harder for people to obtain the guns used in these shootings to begin with? Wow. You, you, wow.
So basically, the, the argument being made there is right. Ben Shapiro and a lot of conservatives create a false dichotomy for Americans to deal with. They, what they want the average American to believe is that conservatives are pro-gun and they are the only ones that are pro-gun and lefties are anti-gun and, the, and they are the anti-gun people. So no matter how much you agree with the left on, if you want to retain your Second Amendment right to bear arms, then you better vote Republican because no matter how much shit you disagree with them on, they're the only ones fighting to keep your gun rights. And sadly, in a lot of cases, effectively, that is the case. Vosh yelled at me on stream because I disagreed with him about school shootings not being a big deal, lol. So, alright. When Vosh said that school shootings aren't a big deal, did he say school shootings aren't a big deal, or did he say school shootings aren't a big deal when you account for all of the overall gun homicide that happens in America? Because, yeah, mass shootings of all kinds are actually a pithy tiny portion of gun homicide uh, crime in America. Most gun homicide is committed with handguns. Most states that actually have sensible uh, rules around what they restrict in, in regards to guns are mostly restricting handguns and not, like, assault weapons. No, it's what Zan said. Yeah, I know that's what he said because I know that Vosh isn't retarded. But here's the thing. I do believe in making it harder to obtain firearms. I don't agree with bans. That's what I'm against. I don't like the bans for attachments, for magazine capacities, for certain guns overall. I don't like banning guns. I like the idea of being able to go to a range, a controlled environment, and being able to shoot, like, military-grade, high-tier f***ing weaponry, you know? Maybe you shouldn't be able to own a tank, but maybe you should be able to go to a licensed, like, place where you can drive and shoot a tank in America. Like, I think that should be a a allowed, right? Stop using pithy wrong challenge? Wait, did I use pithy incorrectly? I feel like I used it correctly there. Regardless, uh, like, I think that's completely reasonable. Uh, what I think America should do is instead of focusing on banning certain types of ammunition, magazines, attachments, guns, and so on, should instead focus on building a system for obtaining guns that is more reasonable. For example, Florida just got rid of the need to, conceal to get a concealed carry permit to conceal carry your gun. As long as you are legally allowed to own a gun and you own a gun, you can conceal carry it in Florida now. And you can just straight up open carry if you're fishing or hunting or doing any recreational activity along those lines. Um, and so, ban that shit? Assault weapons, I mean? Why? Why should assault weapons be banned? What, what do you mean by assault weapon, by the way? Here's the funny thing. People who use that word always know nothing about guns, usually. Like, I'm not a gun expert by any means, but I typically know- I, I find I usually know more about guns than the people who say that. If you show this gun to most anti-gun people, and if and you ask them, do you think this gun should be banned? So many of them will say no. Because look at it. It's not a scary looking gun. It looks like Grandpappy's old hunting rifle. Sure, it's got a magazine there, but, you know, it, it sometimes sometimes you want to fit some rounds, right? But it looks like Grandpappy's old, uh, old hunting rifle. Well, um... Yeah, it's standard World War II. That's that's a World War II issue assault rifle. And it can go into full auto. And it can absolutely do much the same effect as, like, an AR-15. Actually more effective at, like, what a school shooter or a mass shooter would want to do than an AR-15. At least most AR-15s available in America now. Basically, the idea of being able to shoot super fast from a big magazine and do a mass shooting, as much of a worry as it is, realistically and borne out in reality, it is not the most common, like, occurrence. And when those do happen, those guns were usually obtained illegally. And banning those guns doesn't solve the obtaining illegally problem. However, comma, if we make it so it is a very stringent process to obtain a gun in America... Just like Canada has, for example, and Canada's gun violence is nothing, like literally nothing compared to America. Canada doesn't have a lot of gun bans. They ban some guns, but Canada's, like, gun bans are far less aggressive than my state. 
you know, far less aggressive than my state. There are guns you can shoot in Canada. You can't even shoot at a range here in Washington. OK, and yet Canada has like very little gun cr gun violence that no, that's not true. Zan, what part of it? Canada's gun violence being lesser than America's. My family is full of hunters. Lol. Canada has guns. We just have pretty good control. Yeah, no, Canada has guns. Also, like you can just uh, put a stock and a foregrip on a pistol and you effectively have an AR-15, quote unquote. Yeah, it's it's really stupid. A lot the people who are against guns usually have never fired a gun. That's usually how it goes. Usually it's someone who's never fired a gun that is against guns. You take them, fire a gun, and then their world is just rocked. Don't listen to chat, Zan, please. They're going to be stupid about guns. They always are. I know how stupid they are. Canada has very stringent, like, process you have to go through to get a gun. Like, they, not only do you have to get a license, but they also call up your exes and ask if you, if they're afraid of you having a gun. So, like, they go deep. They'll, like, and they background check you daily as well. They run a daily background check on every gun owner in all of Canada. So if you so much as get a speeding ticket, they know. Which is a pretty damn effective way of catching at-risk people who own guns, right? Like, it's a pretty damn effective system. I'm in favor of systems like that here in America. I don't like the banning of shit. I don't like that, like, the AR-15s I shoot at my local range, the mags have had to be modified to take only a maximum of 10 rounds instead of the normal 30. Because even in a controlled range setting, there's some arbitrary rule behind, yeah, you can only have 10 rounds in there. Like, it's like, okay, so you're punishing every legal law-abiding gun owner by having to destroy their fingers by loading more often? Like, I'd like to be able to shoot 30 rounds out of the AR-15 downrange and then reload instead of having to shoot 10, reload, shoot 10, reload, shoot 10, reload. And if you think that's not a big deal, I know you've never shot a gun because no one who's ever loaded a magazine before would ever say that's not a big deal. Sorry. <laughs> got, a, got a little emotional there. Anyway. Ow. Conservatives are making a false dichotomy between either being right-wing and being fully anti- or pro-gun and anti-any form of gun control um, and gun reform and being, uh, uh, like, left-wing and having to be fully anti-gun across the board. You, you mean that there are other... I didn't say those are the only two options. One option was better than the other option. There is a third option, but that's probably not the third option because it turns out that we've been trying to make it tougher for school shooters to obtain their weapons, and it's been radically failing every step along the way. Criminals mock society's laws. And a third option, by the way. I mean, it is true that if you just ban the guns, it doesn't work. The thing is, what you the problem right now is that there is a massive amount of effort and resources being dedicated, particularly by like the ATF and other like parts of the government made to investigate gun crime and like unlawful gun ownership is being dedicated to like trying to find out if like otherwise completely legal law abiding gun owners own like a 30 round magazine instead of the legally required 10 round magazine. Like if those resources were otherwise being dedicated to taking down organized cri like criminal gangs that have lots of guns or uh, uh, pursuing people who are massive red flags who own a lot of guns or own any guns um, pursuing just the general criminal underground trade of firearms and obtaining those like if that effort was instead being focused on that we'd see so much less criminal and violent uh, just crime with guns because the criminals wouldn't have the guns and all that resources wouldn't be being spent on policing legal law abiding gun owners would be things like making And the things they're policing for are like, it's not like they're out looking for risky people. They're out there looking for people at ranges and stuff and, and like who are uploading videos online who have small, tiny attachments on their guns that are technically a felony. And that's what they do. They pass laws that overnight make people felons. If you have this attachment on your gun, this tiny, if you don't have this little clip on your gun, for example, this tiny little, like uh, this little, little, not clip, this little, um... Uh, piece of metal this little like uh, uh, it's like a little switch thing you put into it if you don't have that in a lot of states felony and prison like that is not what the ATF and our government should be focusing on in regards to legislating guns that is a waste of time and a waste of resources actually pursuing illegal gun ownership as in people who are criminals that want to do illegal shit with their guns owning guns that is what needs to be the top priority of these uh, institutions sure that people who have serious red flags in their past are involuntarily committed 
to mental institutions. That's not something that I see the left supporting either. And in fact, I've provided like entire lists of things I think can be done to help facilitate the end of school shootings. The, the point that I was making in that video is that if you're talking about what teachers in the situation by the way, for those of you guys who think that, like, taking away the guns is a solution to school shootings, there would just be a massive increase in school knifings. And I know that wouldn't be as massively, like, carnage, you know, causing as a school shooting, but it would still be a problem, and the core problem would still be there. Getting rid of the guns. The guns are not the problem. There are a lot of countries, even in Europe, that have a lot of fucking guns. Even, like, guns that go full auto, like big brrrr guns, right? Um, and they don't have school shootings, they don't have mass shootings, because the core problems that cause gun violence are accommodated for by other systems that the country has built up, such as free healthcare, and very readily accessible, and very, you know, up-to-date and accommodating, um, you know, mental health counseling. Like, there, there's, there's not a lot of untreated mental illness in countries where there's a lot of guns and not a lot of gun violence. It, like, the core of it is generally, usually a lot of the time, untreated mental illness, which isn't generally a problem when you've got robust mental health care that's free. ...situation can do. That, that, that's what we're talking about here. What can a teacher in the situation do? So here are the two scenarios. Teacher is unarmed or teacher is armed, but it's a teacher in the scenario. If you can tell me how the teacher can retroactively go back in time in a time machine and prevent the shooter from getting the gun, I'm up for that too. I just don't see how you're gonna make that happen. We'll get to more of these crazy ladies in just one oh, second. Sponsorship. First, imagine time that show. you go to a coffee shop and you open up your laptop and you're trying okay. to read something good. Dumb, right. Which I guess is kind of par for the course. Yeah, the, we, we always have to skip through the, the advertisements. There's always ads. Wait, what? Did... Um, Ben, maybe your editors didn't know this, but you've debated Neil deGrasse Tyson before on trans issues, and he washed you the fuck out. They included the, the Neil deGrasse Tyson meme when, like, one of the most notable things he's done is blow Ben Shapiro's back out in a debate about trans rights. <laughs> okay. Ben said, quote, school lunches are not going to solve the problem of child hunger, adding, it does not take that much money to feed a child, which is entirely the point, Ben. We shouldn't let any kid go hungry. And free school lunch goes a long way in helping solve that problem. Oh, yeah. This was when, when uh, Ben Shapiro went against the idea of uh, giving kids free school lunches. And I believe his logic at the time was, it's not that expensive for parents to provide their kids a free lunch. And if they can't do that, then they're clearly not good parents and they're not fit for parenting. And it's like, okay, but that's not a solution. That's just a gotcha against poor parents. Okay, yeah, sure. They, they weren't prepared. Whatever. You got them. But what, what's your solution to the problem of kids going to school hungry because they come from households where they either don't have the time, money, or both to prepare lunches for their kids? Problem. No, it really, really doesn't. It really, really does not. Okay, if you're talking about child starvation in the United States, like kids who are radically malnourished, it's not because of school lunch availability or unavailability. Uh, my, my, I'm just going to say right now, this is him trying to logic bro his way out of taking the anti-free school lunch side. The funny thing is, like, you'll get people who are like populist faux lefties who will say, how can someone be so evil as to be against school lunch for free for kids? And then, like, they don't believe Ben Shapiro is a demon? Like, how many, how many like, so-called lefty populist types have you seen that'll, like, virtue signal about how evil it is to be against free school lunch for kids but don't agree with calling Ben Shapiro evil? It's because they're not getting food at home. Okay, the point that I was making is that school lunches while they marginally may help kids nutritionally, also involve enormous amounts of waste, as anybody who has ever worked at a school will tell you. A huge percentage of that food ends up in the trash. Wow, this is garbage. If you actually want to help kids who are suffering from severe malnutrition, you have to look to their homes. Simply giving- Okay. Saying that one, that, that giving free school lunches is not a all-in-one solution for kids not having access to readily accessible meals is not an argument against it. You're basically making the argument that we should be giving free school lunches and also providing... You guys know that you can't 
like get a hot meal with food stamps, right? You guys know that's part of like like how food stamps work. You're you, you're not allowed to get hot meals. The only reason they do that is to make poor people suffer. That's the only reason that's a stipulation of food stamps that you can't get hot meals. Is because being able to go in and conveniently grab like a rotisserie chicken from like a Publix or whatever or a Walmart to bring home to your kids so you can like immediately plate a, a meal for your kids and then get to work on your second like on your night job that would make life for poor people a little bit too easy a little bit too easy you got to keep poor people down so they do things such as that like oh, okay we'll give you food stamps so you're not literally starving to death we still need living poor people to keep the underbelly of society running but um we're not going to allow you to have a hot meal like you, your kids, like you, you can buy like canned soup and and you know microwave that for your kids if you want them to have a hot meal. True, Ben's entire argument is who cares about hungry children when you can punish poor people? Yeah, what he's advocating for is for like poor families to have their kids taken away from them, not for them to get any financial service. If that's not already very obvious, giving them lunch at school ain't going to do it. According to the Shapiro standard, a coup is acceptable when a government comes in and starts messing with the Supreme Court. Wait, that's what Netanyahu is doing in Israel. So should there be a coup should, in Israel? Should there be a coup? I mean, it's not my rule. That's it's actually a, a really great point, Cenk. That's literally what Netanyahu yeah. is doing. And by the way, just to be clear, not in favor of coups under any circumstance. No, it's not my rule. I don't want the <laughs> yeah. coups, okay? Yeah, a story today, member- They're trolling Ben Shapiro, TYT, but still. This, this is a good clip. Members of the Israeli Defense Forces have threatened to stop uh, serving should Netanyahu get his way and weaken the country's Supreme Court. I'm sure that it, Ben would think that they should go further. This is an old clip for those that don't know. You don't know me. You don't. What is good? You don't know. You don't know me. So first TYT's of all, let me um, actually anymore. tell you what I said in the original quote. In the original quote, I said that there should not be a coup in Brazil. That was the question. Should there be a coup in Brazil? And I said, no, unless your rights are inherently unprotectable any other way than through a coup, then a coup is inappropriate. What would it take to justify an uprising to overthrow the government? What line would the government have to cross for you to support something like that? Ben Shapiro supports the January 6th riots. He's made excuses for it and backed it up like every other conservative pundit has for years now. Um, his standard is a coup for something that to get a person in power I agree with is good, but a coup to get somebody in power I don't agree with is bad. That is his standard. It is not that complicated. Yeah. Well, the answer is that you could not actually achieve any of your rights by any other means. By any other means. By any other means. I would assume that there would be situations in which even Chank and Anna are in favor of a coup. If Donald Trump took complete control of the United States military, dissolved the Supreme Court, and then that decided that he was going to eviscerate the Bill of Rights, I assume they'd be in favor of a coup. If I well, that would be Trump doing a coup. So that wouldn't be cooing Trump. That would be fighting against his coup. Wait, did he just say that that would... Did he just kind of, like, quietly admit that he wouldn't see Trump doing that as a coup to begin with? That would be, like, Trump taking his rightful place in power? Because what he described was all the steps of a real, actual coup. Like, taking control of the military, then overthrowing the sitting government and instilling yourself in power. Those steps he described Trump doing are an actual coup... And then he says, and so if we did a coup to get Trump out of power, would you be against that? It's like, well, no, because that wouldn't be a coup. That would just be fighting against the coup that Trump is doing in this hypothetical. What? What? The, the logic of this, by the way, is like saying, OK, I'm against shooting people unless it's absolutely necessary. Like, for example, if <laughs> if you have to shoot someone. Because they're gonna shoot you if you shoot them. I can't. I can't. I can't keep the analogy straight. Never mind. Basically, it's like arguing that you wouldn't be justified in shooting someone who shot you. I don't know. His logic's stupid, and I'm stoned. Okay. Even my stoned brain can't get down to Ben's level. Let me get a little more weed in me, and maybe I can handle it. If I were the rule, uh, the benevolent dictator of the world, I would legalize bestiality where you are. You are, you are pleasuring the animal. And so, obviously, everybody has limits in which... Never been a fan of TYT. They say that 
a coup would be appropriate. So when they say they're never in favor of a coup, that's obviously untrue. It's not true. As far as the situation with Netanyahu and Israel, Israel does not have a written constitution. The situation in Israel is completely different than the situation in Honduras. In Honduras, the president... Oh, sh... We just got the, the situation is completely different response. If someone says in regards to a discussion of uh, uh, foreign policy, essentially leaving their argument at it's a completely different situation when someone compares two extremely comparable situations, then uh, they're, they're this full of shit. Tankies make that same response when you compare what's happening in Ukraine to any other form of imperial imperialist nation invading another country to try to annex their territory. It's not the same. It's not the same. But it is the same. The president of Honduras decided to basically dissolve the Supreme Court entirely and simply declare that he was going to be the sole ruler of the country. That is not remotely what is happening in Israel. It's amazing. <laughs> right? <laughs> Raise your hand if you breathe air. But seriously, Ben, we got to get this impersonation like a little more on point here, okay? First of all, you're getting too squealy and you're getting too happy. Kamala starts off deep. She starts off deep and low and slow. So it's something like... <laughs> You know what I mean? Like she goes into the maniac. Wait, this isn't like this isn't like a this isn't like a hate post. This could even be a pro Ben Shapiro person. She goes into it. She's not born with. Is this person like bad because the the hair or something or the makeup? Like what what's so, wrong with this person? Again. And then she throws hands in. So you see how that first clip that I stitched? She was like, her hands were kind of flailing at the same time. So she was like. <laughs> Something like that. Try it again. I want to see. I want to see. It's a, it's a very good critique. And in fact, I, I've seen this one before and I've tried to work it in. It's like... <laughs> AI is two letters and it stands for artificial intelligence. We're going to finish the segment off right there because I think leaving you all with that like burning feeling of cringe deep inside of your core, like like your heart, you know that muscle that con like constrains on your heart whenever you're stressed out that makes it hard to breathe and it feels like you're having a heart attack? That muscle is currently contracting right now because of the cringe and it's like on fire. Um, and I feel like there's no better feeling for you guys to be uh, experiencing to end the segment off on than that, you know? Always good to leave people coming out of my videos with a feeling of, of deep distaste. Oh God, Ben Shapiro is stupid.